Bam. What a welcome. What a zazoom shazam. Kapow. Last Christmas, when? Kapow, yeah. pow, 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 pow. Wait. <laughs> uh, for, for a mailbag. Uh, what's it? What? what, what? <laughs> People have sent us stuff <laughs> through the mail. <laughs> we, we have got some absolute rip snorters this week. They have been really. Yes. Really? Yes. I've, I've been going through and I was like, okay. So it's not just the usual mix of complaints and he's curated. A, he's curated a, uh, an, an A plus 10 out of 10 I've got list some goodies. Of People emails. have been upping their, their, their fucking comment game, have they, after they, they the success have. of they the really mailbag? Have. Yes. Good. And also, quite honestly, a little wake-up call from me. A little bit of a, can we please take some time here? If you send in junk, it won't get read. It'll go straight to the no folder. All right? But honestly, folks out there listening, and I say folks, you're up crushing it this week. Some top-notch this, emails. They've all been going in the capital yes folder. Yes. 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 Nice. They're nice. in. Nice. Right, mm. we're going to get started. Okay. Mm. This is from Atomic Snow Globe, a name I believe I recognize from Twitch chat. Anyway, got a wholesome story about, this is a nice start to the, to the mailbag. This is about a, a wholesome story about their interaction with Lewis Brindley, do Yogg's cast. Okay? Oh. 2017, wind your mind back five years, Insomnia oh. 62 in Birmingham. Well, okay. what was happening then? So, uh, Thomas well, you Snowglobe, were at Insomnia, I guess. He was there. Apparently, a bunch of you were. Long story short, it was Thomas Snowglobe's a bit of a loner. Has a few issues. Went to the convention on their own, trying to trying to which is i think admirable to go there i want to get out of my shell i want to put myself in a, in a situation where i'm going to feel a little awkward sure I, I, you know get out there i think that's a good way of challenging it yeah. uh you know rather than retreat and say no i'm a loner say i i feel like i'm alone i don't want to be i'm going to do something about it goes to i series nice start meets a bunch of you lads at the booth great friendly interactions all around fast forward to 2019 Yogcon, we all remember it well. Uh, yeah. This has fallen in with a pretty cool crowd of fellow Yogs fans, if he does say so himself, who's oh, attending wow. the convention with. Doing a bit better these days, I'm still pretty rough. Then a moment happens I'll never forget. Lewis is walking about in his Steve Jobs getup. I figure he's been swarmed by enough fans for one day, so I intend to let him go about his day. Instead, he stops me and says, holy shit, man, how are you doing? And they had a conversation, you guys had a conversation about how they were doing and uh, how much he, he loved the Steve Jobs character. During this conversation and later conversation at the signing booth and around the convention, you demonstrated that you clearly remembered some details about this uh, this lad's life. He'd obviously overshared a little bit. And he was very, very cheered by the fact that that you had helped him out by even just remembering Fuck. who this lad and, was. And now to this day, that man is Ravs. <laughs> well done. <laughs> well done, Lewis. You did you've done it again. You found another thought, you know, one. You were right there. You you helped this lad out when he was feeling down, and uh you should be commended for it, Lewis. Well done. Well, I obviously I obviously I do vaguely remember that. I definitely recognize the name. Um it's been You'd a few recognize hard the years. face, right? Since I don't you know if I can recall. I don't know if I can recall what he looks like, but maybe if I met him again, I you, if I'd, you bumped into him in I'd the road, you'd him. probably recognize him, right? I tell you what, this doesn't sound great, right? But Atomic Snow Globe, if you're listening, I think you you probably have like a um, I don't want to say weird, but like a a recognizable face so a lot of you got a big goiter son <laughs> no, didn't want to say at the time it's but. it's my goiter <laughs> it's just huge no, no i don't think he i don't think it's bad i just think it's like more because you know ben is like a generic human being he right? is yeah printed he's like a very a forgettable face man yeah gosh yeah. that's not nice to say but i find ben actually has a very um very memorable face i actually think that ben reminds me a bit of bruno from uh, the dota scene you know they, oh, they, have, whoa, they whoa. share similarities. I would say that they look nothing alike. No, I don't know. No, I think I, there's definitely some likenesses there. I mean, that's a joke it. too. All of this is. I, I think sometimes people just leave an impression on you sometimes and that sticks with you. So yeah. Topic Snow, I hope you're doing well because, yeah, big fan. So here's here's uh, a, a request a request for aid. Right. Okay. Uh, I'm a guy about to just have his 21st birthday. Just recently had the first big breakup. Struggling uh, with accepting the newfound situation. They've moved back in with their parents in their hometown. I was just wondering if you had any advice on how to deal with such a, a breakup and how to create a new life for myself. Listen to me, Scott. You're 20. You're 20 years old. All right. You don't need to create a new life for yourself. Your life has barely begun, my friend. Yeah. Do not let, let me take this, this one, guys. Setback do not let, let this, this hold on, just let me say, do not let this setback 
because you're only seven years older than my eldest daughter. I wouldn't like her to think that after a breakup, that's it. Got to create a new life for myself. You're 20. Carry it on, feels but... that way, though, at the time, though, right? A, br a breakup at that age feels like oh, kind of devastating because you don't the, have take the... the broad view. Take the broad view. You don't oh. have the experience. You don't have the life experience. But let me tell you this, my friend, hotshot. Listen to this. <laughs> I've been married for 20 years. If I suddenly found myself single, holy crap, I would go mental. I'd be all over the damn place. I'd yeah. be like watching TV in my underpants even more than I do now. Yeah. I'd be eating sun chips on the sofa, which I'm not allowed to. To do now i'd be <laughs> man i would go crazy and just enjoy being being single for a little bit especially while you're so young you know yeah. like christ just get out there uh be be single have a mingle and uh see where life takes you, and you let know? it dingle don't, don't take it don't take it too seriously especially at, at that age just get in with a good group of people have some fun you know see where life takes you and then you can meet somebody else probably and then settle down or whatever it's not it's not nothing's written in stone at that age for sure. Indeed. It does get harder as you get older for sure, but uh, 20, 21, come on, man. Just uh, just don't think about it too much. Yeah. Sometimes things just happen as well, you know? You just got to be out there. Have you ever had a breakup either of you? No. In my teens, but like none 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 so devastating that were like, you know, I didn't I I wasn't oh shit, Terry's just flipped over. Hang on, I just got to flip him. Carry on. <laughs> I'll be right back. <laughs> Oh my gosh, the care and attention that man gives. Well, look, I mean, I have had a couple of big long-term breakups in my time and they've usually happened because something was wrong, right? Mm. And it, was, it wasn't like Hollywood. It wasn't this shouting and explosions or dramatic stuff. It was just... Yeah, look, oh. this isn't working. It's better for both of us. You know, I think you don't want to be in a relationship with somebody who doesn't want to be in a relationship with mm, you. Mm. You know, I think, like, I don't want to say look on the bright side, but realistically, um, you know, as someone who is currently experiencing something similar, it's difficult to it's difficult to get perspective. You're very confused. Yeah. You're very, like, you're very sad about all of the memories that you've made together, and they're somehow tainted now. You're like, oh, my God. Everybody you know, these, uh, handles stuff. things differently as well. I think the main thing to to uh, to uh take note of is uh it's okay to to be sad. It's okay to be upset. It's okay mm -hmm, to, to mm -hmm. be emotional about it. It is an emotional thing, right? Like, uh, if it knocks you for a day, for a week, or whatever, then, then, then that's what it is. You know what I mean? Like, you just gotta you just gotta work through it and just get to the other I side get to the better tough. spot you know that the, the, there's that the, you know you've got to there's a lot of disentangling of, of your lives and and you know who gets the who gets terry you know who gets who gets all the, the dvds you know there's a lot of like you know there's a lot of also like just you know you had a lot of thoughts about where you were going and you know you felt very safe and now suddenly there's this idea that you have to meet someone else and find someone else and are they gonna be as good or yeah are they gonna are they you know all of these like stupid fears for the future that's what it is it's like a confusion and this idea of what am i gonna do what's gonna happen to yeah. me um but no you don't need to to worry too much about that because you made it this far and uh and you will you've got you know you've got a whole you know wait till you're 40 then mm. then stop <laughs> i remember yeah. one <laughs> one one particular uh teenage breakup that i had Again, I didn't really take it too bad, and I don't think the other person took it too bad either. But I remember um, at the time, and maybe this is me, like uh, wise beyond my years or whatever. <laughs> I just like I, I, I was like maybe like a, a little bit put out, but it was like a mutual thing, right? It wasn't like I wasn't just like out of the nowhere, out of nowhere, dumped or whatever. But I remember playing a lot of uh, uh, Pharaoh by Impressions, you know, the city builder game. <laughs> I just got like Good stuck Lord. in. Yeah, I was just like, oh, man. Well, time to play some Pharaoh. <laughs> I, think I sat around in my underpants for like a whole weekend just uh just no lifing this game and uh and at the end i felt great so Good stuff. i don't know play some yeah. pharaoh there you play, go play some pharaoh. that's a great bit of suggestion yeah yeah, yeah. all right here's cool. uh here's the next email my name's vince and i'm from new jersey over in the u.s that's yeah. that's how vince is gonna speak of course Did he, i didn't realize we had an audio message from him that's so yeah. interesting hey, some time guys. ago you guys i gotta record this uh message <laughs> for you guys it's a voicemail i'm in new jersey some time ago, you guys had a discussion about locks on doors, and I got a great story for the pro locks team. During college, I rented an apartment with two friends who were and are still dating. The apartment was fairly old townhouse, no doors except the bathroom having locks. One night, I was having trouble falling asleep because my roommates had a TV too loud, 
and the bedroom was right behind the the wall with my headboard on it. In short, I knocked, I entered the room, I asked him, could you turn the fucking volume down, please? <laughs> and I walked in on him having sex. All oh, three of us, oh. all three of us are basically screaming like we witnessed the murder. I purged the whole moment from my memory, but the embarrassment still stays with me to this day. Keep up the great content. I love listening to the episodes on my three-hour drive to work. There's God's degrees streets. of it, though. I feel like there's degrees of it. I feel like if you bar if you barge into somebody's room and there's two people just kind of like moving under the covers, it's like okay, whatever. If you barge in the room and somebody is just fucking balls deep, uh, unclogging the drain sort right. of thing. Uh, legs all over the place. Legs sweat. all over the damn yeah. place. It stinks. Like, that's different, right? That's going to hit this you. This has happened to me. Right. Um, so in uni, I was uh, good friends with this guy who was um, just down the hall. And we used to play uh, mostly just multiplayer online video games together. Pre, pre This was pre-WoW, but we played Dark Age of Camelot and we played oh, um, Star yeah. Wars the Galaxy. Right, together. right, right. Yeah. And he had one of those guidebooks, right? One of those, what was it called? Um, Brady oh. Games. Brady Games, those big guidebooks, right, yeah. to Star Wars Galaxies. Um, a Brady Maybe Games Guide to Star Wars, Wars Galaxies. Anyway. With all the maps and everything in there. Wait, I borrowed it occasionally, he, you know, and, and it was always, uh, you know, I, I needed it for some reason. And we always just to be, used to fairly freely, freely go into each other's rooms. And I just thought he probably wasn't going to be in. We didn't leave our doors unlocked. It was in the uni halls of residence. So, we, you know, I just sort of pushed my way in to get it. And... <laughs> He was, he was getting a blowjob. Oh my goodness! <laughs> nice. Oh my goodness! Oh, and it was, it was quite striking actually. He was like stood up. He had his back to me. Oh wow! Now listen, he might have been getting a blowjob, or she might have just been like inspecting his. <laughs> oh, yeah, his, yeah. His oh, I'm like, sure. Yeah, yeah. It might have been some other. There might, she I might don't have know, been maybe braiding like, his bush or something. There, maybe, or yeah, there was there might have been something else going on. But so wait, wait, so he, not, he's standing up. He had his. He's standing up. Have with a sit back down. Me. I mean, that's gonna be. <laughs> it's gonna be hard work. I know. I mean, I know. Sometimes you just want to have a stand up, though, too. You know, it's just like saying, sit down. Christ. You ever just eaten your lunch standing up before? You're like, oh, I'm sick of sitting down. I'm gonna. Stand I think he up might today. have been sat down, but I think he jumped up as it was happening. What, you know, as I came out. Cock in her mouth. No, I think it was like like trying to hide. You know, like, I don't know, like a sudden emergency, like when your mum, you know, bangs on the door or whatever, and you're like, oh. I was going to say, you know, that, like, that, that's, that pivot move, If let's say he's sat facing the door, sees the door opening, and whilst maintaining blowjob situational, aware situational awareness, is able to keep the job going whilst turning his back and standing. That's some skill. That's like some I fucking know. Cirque du Soleil shit right there. I'm just saying. Well, I, see to, I think he was in like a dressing gown, so it was quite <laughs> covered like... Where is when this he stood guy? Up, like, Hugh Hefner? I couldn't even. What the fuck is going on? <laughs> There's always one at university, right? That has like a fucking kimono or a dressing gown or whatever. And just gets was, BJs all the time. Just gets blown all the damn time. Well, I, I guess uh, it may be, maybe ease of access is a big attractor for, for women that want to give a man oral sex or, or anyone who wants to give a fellow oral sex. Ease of access might be one of the biggest sort of, you know what? I will give this person a blowjob because a dressing gown is very easy to open. It's going to be much simpler than trousers. So if you want mm. to get uh, fellated, uh, perhaps just wear a loose robed dressing gown more often. Smoking yeah. jacket, perhaps. So yeah, that's what that's. Oh, it's happened to all of us. Um, that's what I was saying. It's definitely <laughs> not. No, I mean I've definitely I've never like barged in on somebody uh, mid uh, mid deed, but I definitely heard a lot. Uh, oh. Way more than I care to, uh, to to remember, but oh my god, neighbors, I, I heard, uh, randoms, like yeah. oh god damn, like uh, we at university, we parties. had a big house share. There were like eight yeah. of us in there, and the, the there was a girl. We never really got along with her. She kept herself to herself. I think she was Danish. Her boyfriend, who also sold weed, would come around, and they would have incredibly loud sex. And we could all hear it. And then she'd just come out and say, hey, what's up? It's like, geez, could you? Yeah. You know, it's a little bit much. I, I This was at, at, <laughs> this was at a TI. This was Jeez, at, a, at a TI one time. It's a little bit It's a much. little much. I mean, it's just, it's so loud. Like, we're trying to watch the telly. Ah! Ah! Like, yeah, banging on the walls. Like, people really get come into on. it, though, you know? Like, some people just really like to be overly vocal. Uh, well, she, loved, she fucking loved it. Anyway, I was at a TI one time. I was in my room watching some baseball, about to go to sleep. And the, I can hear the... The, a lot of sex happening in the hotel room next to mine. Right. There were several dudes in there and one lady. And Whoa. I was like, I wonder if this is one of those hotel gangbangs I've seen on Pornhub 
I hate uh, the profile. thought of that. I like I just I, I just feel like that's so um I don't know, like the 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 whole idea of it just makes me feel like a bit sick kind just of. Just a bunch know? of like, dudes like what are you doing when it's not it your turn very, and there's a bunch of you? Are you well, that, are you chatting? That too, but like the, the whole thing just feels really. <laughs> so have you seen uh, House of the Dragon? What do you think about the new House of the Dragon? I thought it kind of maybe you know it needed to pay so much service to what had gone before in the previous. Oh, it's your turn. No, sorry, I'll wait. Yep. Oh, no, did you actually? Barrel. Did you watch it, Flex? <laughs> did you watch the? I did watch it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And did, was it good? Um, it's a bit like watching. It's a bit like a fanfic of something that you really liked. Right. So because it's leading into Game of Thrones. It can't really suddenly introduce anything particularly new or interesting, certainly not in the first episode. No. So we've got all the Targaryens, they've all got the blonde hair. They reference all the other places like, oh, I'm so-and-so Baratheon. Like, oh, it's a Baratheon. I recognize that name. So it felt a bit like yeah. tropey, you know? So like, I, I remember no, no, no. all this. And also it's just sort of like, you know, so much of the world has already been sort of laid out in the previous series. Yeah. It's kind of like, I think the same problem they have with all the Star Wars stuff is it's so. All right, that's enough. In. It's my go. I'm gonna get in on this. Oh wait, get, can I just say though? Ash. Sorry, no, no, yeah, go for it. Just, yep. just. Uh, I don't in mind the, going last. That's fine. In this, in the same, uh, in in the same um, uh, vein of this, <laughs> I, can, I want everyone to picture the three uh, of us <laughs> in a hotel room. No, don't picture us in a hotel room while we're doing so a gang gross, bang. man. I, I hate that. <laughs> I hate the thought of like twelve dudes and one girl in a hotel room. It just like uh, it's uh, really uncomfortable. If they're all into me, it. So. I mean, what's the problem? I guess so. Uh, I mean, uh, you know, live and let live or whatever. But I just there's just something about it. You know, like I just feel like it's kind of. Do you know what? If it was weird. twelve women and one dude, would you feel the same way? Yeah, I would actually. Yeah, like it's just. I think it's that mass consensual. You know, like like. 13 people all consenting to one thing i just call bullshit like it just it, it feels never like happens right it feels yeah, like it's a weird cult, isn't it? yeah it it's is too weird. weird you're right i i do like the the one-on-one -on -one intimacy yeah you know same. i like pay yeah. attention to one person yeah. usually myself um but, <laughs> yeah you know <laughs> um <laughs> let's move on p flat listen quick. uh the, the this in the same way that the house of dragons being a, a prequel of, 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 of well definitely a prequel um, I've been watching, catching up on Better Call Saul, which is uh, which is also so the Mrs. same. So Mrs. F right? been watching that as well, yeah. And yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I I enjoy it. I really like the whole sort of um, you know Breaking Bad universe that's been created. Me too. And, yeah, it's uh, good. And elaborated on and stuff like that. But the 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 one thing that always gets me with the uh, with prequels is that if you, if you think about it hard enough. Like there's no, um, there's not really any surprises, right? Like something's there's no, happened. There's nothing at stake. No, that's it. Because yeah. you're like, okay, well, I know that this person survives. Like right. this is interesting, but there's no, um, there's not really much consequence involved, right? Like yeah. at worst, this person is going to get injured and then recover probably, yeah. you know? But like, I think that's my only thing. Like, I, I think it's brilliant. I think the whole thing has been really good. I've really enjoyed it. But Well, they have got the set, the whole scenes where, you know, it's him in the future, though, as well. So it does I haven't hint. gotten to those yet, actually. I, I'm just, oh. just arriving at them now. I, I just watched the right. last um, in the past episode. Mm. And uh, now I have four episodes of black and white Gene who works at Cinnabon, which I'm, yes. I'm looking forward to. But yeah, that's my only that's my uh, my only real sort of uh, criticism, I guess, of uh, prequel stuff, you know. But um, again, I've really enjoyed it. It hasn't taken away any enjoyment. I th I, I thought it was amazing. But yeah, yeah, it's nice to have a refresh of that universe because it was a good time. You had good memories yeah. with Breaking Bad. It was a good relationship oh, yeah. that you know, sadly was it was ended. Mm -hmm. um, and you want more of it, you know? Yeah. And that's understandable. Right. We've got the next um, one. This is, sorry. this is, do you remember we talked about Real Ale? Yes. Mm -hmm. I remember. This is, from, this is from someone calling themselves Real, the Real Ale Youth. Right. Uh, <laughs> okay. This, uh, so I'm 22 years old. <laughs> the Real Ale Bandit. Yeah. I'm 22 years old, fresh out of uni. Uh -huh. I see myself as a young, hip, trendy guy. Okay. I mean, that statement alone tells me but yeah, you are not uh, red a young, flag hip, trendy straight, guy. straight away okay. from me, yeah. Because um... But no. <laughs> they say but no. Apparently my enjoyment of real L has influenced my lifestyle in a way I've previously overlooked. Allow me to pick apart my interest and I'll let you decide if I have passed the point of no return in the real L drinkers community. If you'll remember, I gave a list of typical what I consider typical personality traits of a real ale drinker. Mrs. F, when I told her this, said to me, that sounds like anecdata, which is Whoa. like anecdotal data. And I was like, all right, calm down, love. Right? You're not, you're not <laughs> doing I don't a fucking know what hit, that means, hit yeah. podcast. Yeah, yeah. Shut up. 
Come on. And then she told me to fuck well, off. Well, she's not going to listen to this yeah. one. So she doesn't listen right. anymore. I think she got sick of the bullshit. Anyway, he, he, this is how real youth is. I have long God, hippie I've been told hair. to fuck off a lot recently. I don't know what. <laughs> it's like something in the air, or I don't know yeah. what's going on. We got all sassy. The women got all sassy. I, don't know what's I think it's because Beyonce's be album's hormones. come out. It's empowered. Oh, no, that yeah. must be it. It's the new Beyonce yeah. album. Jesus. I have long hippieish beard and uh, long hippieish hair and a beard. I mostly wear blue Levi's because they last a long time, and I can't be asked to buy new trousers. My Spotify is full of Rush, Simon and Garfunkel, The Grateful Dead, and Willie Nelson. On the weekend, I'll go down to my local. Has no TV, no fruit machine, no dartboard, no pool table, no music. I'll see who's about at the pub. Have a few pints of Hen Harry or Blonde Witch. And sure. occasionally a Jameson's on ice if I'm in the mood. On the last Friday of every month, it's open mic night and I listen to the folk songs. The worst thing is all my friends are the same. It's as if old man culture is a staple of my hometown. If oh. the pub is quiet, well, I'll go home early, possibly roll a joint and flip through my collection of 70s vinyl or play a bass guitar by myself. I work in environmental services, know way too much about local wildlife and have very strong opinions about the way the RSPB is run nowadays. I feel like I should change my ways before I end up collecting air fix models I'm going straight out of out to stock up on Strongbow Dark Fruits and get a haircut. The oh, real LV. man. I'm just saying. <laughs> you just got small town syndrome. That's all it is. It's, is it... he written? Is that true? This, or is is he the, just... this is it. I don't know if it's a joke, it's... but this sounds like uh, the real LV. Th- I mean, it's, it, that is pretty much what I said. I do know yeah. people that do this stuff. Like, that's sure. how they live. Yeah. They tend to be a little older, but. Yeah. Wow. I think that's if fine. This, this, person, this guy exists. Yeah, yeah, he does. Yeah. <laughs> sounds like a fake a fake life doesn't Felt it like I, a face, it sounds like a joke true. well it, it could like be he email. could it, it's either this or um stand up kimono blowjob man so what take your pick you know like which which pick your poison you, right that's the youth that these well actually no that was the youth of your time i guess lewis which is yeah well he was doing a phd he did a phd in astrophysics then went into game design oh wow so he wasn't the full and his name was there. peter molyneux Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! My mind is blown. So yeah, all right. People like this do exist, but he does feel like a stereotype. His whole mm. life is like uh, that's that's what I'm saying. Like I, I'm not saying that's all real ale drinkers. Obviously, I'm just saying you know that it made me laugh that that this was exactly what is, I is described. This the, is this the the tail wagging the dog though, or the the dog wagging the tail? Do you know what I mean? Like, has has all of this? Was this just the one he dipped his toe into this world and then all of it consumed him? No, I think him, he's he's just you know? realised that this is his life. And no, but do you know what I mean? Like, he, I, I, every single one of those things wasn't chosen by him. It was just he picked one, either the real ale or going to that pub, and that changed what he drank, what he listened to, what he did, who he hung out with, and his job and his whole life. You know? Yeah, right? but there's got to be some influences in there as well, He was sucked well, into right? a hipster vortex, mm. you know, and it was out of his control. Maybe a, maybe a, like a sibling or a parent or some somebody that took him to some of these places in the first place, which and then they stuck, you know what I mean? Like, mm. you don't just rock up at a small town and then just decide, okay, time to fit in. Where's the Where's the local? Where's the Where's my where's Spotify? The, where can I get the, the real music? Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Like it's all, it's all, it's a slow process of uh, being sort of, um, you know, influenced. Assimilated. Yeah. Mm. Like the right. Borg. Yeah. I got, I got, well, a, cr- quick, this, is, this is a cracking follow up for the real ale stuff. All right. This is, this is amazing. Hyperion. Hopal's good. I assume he Hi. needs the rest of you guys as well. I'll try to keep this brief. I was listening to you and the boys talk about real ale on the Triforce podcast, and it made me smile to hear you talk about Naked Ladies, which is one of the ales <laughs> that I mentioned. Right. I'm, right, one of the right, brewers, right. Oh, God, okay. yeah. I'm one of the brewers <laughs> at Twickenham Brewery and was actually brewing that beer whilst listening to you talk about it. Holy crap. You are fucking joking me. I am me. not kidding. So this brewery is a really close to where I live. I have been there a bunch of times. One of my daughters did a school project uh, about that brewery. I've bought ale from there a bunch of times. I know this brewery super, super well. Holy crap. We're a tiny brewery of three brewers, nine staff in total. So I'm not used to hearing our beer mentioned outside of camera festivals, which is the campaign for real ale. If you ever fancy a couple of pints on the house, then pop on down, ask for Max, and I'll sort you out some takeaways. Max, I will literally be there this afternoon. I'm Holy going crap. down this afternoon to get some fucking real L. Hell yes! Wow. Hell yes. That is, that is like the first... Def- that is, I think, the first free thing that we've had from an audience member. <laughs> from an audience is, member, yeah. Um, it's sweet. I mean, I had got some free Manscaped stuff, including a pair of oh, underpants. Yeah. Really, true, true, true. really soft yeah, underpants. That's true. We got 
and also I've met a few people who've bought me a pint over the years mm. or some people have asked oh can I sometimes at a restaurant some you know that weird thing that happens in movies where uh, someone says like oh that gentleman on the table over there has bought you a glass of wine yeah mm. and you're like oh and you turn around and he's like a nice dressed man in a suit and that's what happened to me except for it was someone in like an anime shirt you know yeah. and um <laughs> and a cap you know you look over to see who it is sips cap and then you notice right. and then you spit the drink out and do a, a v sign to them as well right <laughs> and it's usually not a glass of wine one time someone actually paid for my meal um, wow. wow! The the, the way it came up and was like, oh, the guy on this table here has paid for your meal, and I was like, wait, the fuck! Wasn't that when I took you out for dinner one time? <laughs> oh shit! Was that you? Yeah, no. he was like, this gentleman has paid for me. Like, oh, I wish I knew him. Oh, thank you. I was like, Lewis, we've been talking for hours. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, we, no, got... So yes, if you did that, thank you. If you're listening, there you uh, go. anonymous fan, it was me. Here's one from uh, from someone regarding driving in America. This is from James. Uh, you're absolutely right about drivers in America. On the whole, we suck. Right. Um, anyway, he goes on to, to list how much <laughs> all the, the different all the different drivers blame this state's bad, that state's bad. Oh, it's those people in this area that we're all good. They're terrible. The conclusion that uh, that they come to is, I think it's because since we have such bad public transport, the driver's ed instructors can't fail students that otherwise that they otherwise would because there's really no other option yes. due to decades of lobbying by car manufacturers, oil companies, highway design and maintenance is handled on a state uh, The level. last mailbag, somebody's mentioned something similar. The same it's, thing. It's, so I think it might well be that. severing a yeah. lifeline. Well, you, I, don't, I don't know whether this is this is true. I, 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 I don't feel like driving instructors are swayed. Well, they, at least at least testers certainly not here are swayed by sob stories like oh i'm not gonna be able to get to work if you don't pass me they th i think they'd lose their job if they were just fucking right, but that's the point is that you can get the bus right here center. you can get the bus right. or the train or something here in the states you can't are driving instructors really just get, like getting sucked into these sob stories i, I think they just it. try to create more work for themselves because it's so easy to drive over there there's nothing to really teach it's just like uh because they use automatic cars too right so it's just like right. all right put your foot on the pedal now drive straight for 800 miles. Okay, I, I think, I don't we're know if done. It's on, I don't know if it's on an individual instructor basis where they get to call the shots so much as the state has just made passing so fucking easy. Man, they basically, should... Basically, as long as you don't hit anybody, you're good to go. If you want to learn how to drive, I, I feel like they should have a system where they fly people over to Jersey and just do like a one-week intensive where you're just driving all day, every day. If you want to learn how to drive, Come over here and learn how to drive, because it's fucking crazy over oh, here driving. I know, it's fucking mental. Like, I yeah. think if you it's can like, drive here, like you can fucking drive well, anywhere. Well, 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 why is it so crazy? Because all of the roads were designed for, like, one farmer with a horse and a cart to uh, right. to take his goods to, to market once a year. Uh, and then they just kind of paved them over and said, okay, now these are four-lane roads. And everybody just sort of said, holy shit. So you got to, like, pull into fields to let people go by? On... It, 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 it's like a driver's education course where it is it's like it's, it's like, like, a, there's like a double course. roundabout then a triple roundabout yeah, yeah. then a single roundabout with weird exits and then there's like a dual lane merge thing and then suddenly you're in like the countryside yeah. and nothing's there's like single lanes everywhere with like blind corners and it's, everything it's, yeah it's a it's a whole it's a whole it's all of it in one small mm. 15 my, minute when drive. my parents come over to visit my my mom looks like she's gonna rip the handle off of the the front uh the front door like the inner front door well, she's, she's like holding on she's so clutching tight. so tight because she thinks that we're gonna get in a head-on collision like every <laughs> time i pass somebody but you have to like it it is tight like there's you know we've lost like wing mirrors everything like it's just it's just the way it happens just the way the roads are <laughs> over here you know just gotta well I've had another it. email. Uh, this is from oh, really? this is from Becky. Hi Becky. Um, okay. So I, Hi, when Becky. I was down in Bristol, I, I can I can relate to this story a little bit. I'll discuss that in a moment. I'd like to share my electric scooter story with you. <laughs> I, I used a, a Voy in Bristol. Yep. Voy is a brand of I believe it's the only brand of electric scooter that, that is available for hire in Bristol. They have some exclusivity thing. That's V O I. Yeah. I rode them while I was down last week. All right. I didn't like it and tried to park it in an empty designated parking spot, but the app told me I couldn't because it was full. Right. I carried on to find another parking spot when really? the scooter unexpectedly slowed down. I pressed the accelerator again and the scooter shot off. I lost control and then ended up with a scooter crashing into my inner left leg just above the ankle. I had oh, to no. hobble my way from the bear pit to A&E, trying to keep bits of subcutaneous tissue from falling out. Jeez. I ended up with 12 stitches, a horrendous infection, and a now gnarly scar. I've got pictures 
but it takes one hell of a strong stomach, so didn't attach them. Fuck those electric scooters, never again. Becky, Becky, I feel like you had a bad experience. And no, oh, well, that's an average one, experience. Though, right? Perhaps bad at riding electric scooters. No, no, I no, had that's a, a great typical time. experience. The typical, like, like, like they do slow down around the city centre in specific pass pedestrian areas. Yeah, but areas. a little turtle pops up and says slow zone or whatever, and you just go slower. Yeah, the the fact that yeah. you can just jump on those things and not wear a helmet and stuff though is well, they do cool. tell you to. I know they tell you to because they're covering themselves, but. They don't right. actually give a shit if you do or not, because it's no. up to you. But who's going to be carrying around their helmet? Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Look, impromptu scooter. Oh, uh, let me just get my helmet that I carry <laughs> around everywhere with me on. Like, you know what I yeah. mean? It's It doesn't make I, much sense. Really, I agree. But... They they are dangerous. Yeah. Obviously. I mean, I, I look at them and I think, do you know what? I'm not, just going to gamble here because I'm also just that. lazy. Yeah. You're, you're, you're riding these things in a city you're unfamiliar with as well, right? Which adds to nah, the, the danger level. Bit. I know this bit, I'd say. Uh, pretty well. The, is the issue I have with Bristol in particular is it's very bobbly. Okay, it's but very bobbly. You a lot like of cobblestones, a lot of ups and downs, a lot of hills, a lot of quite tight turns. It's not honestly the best place. No, no. But what if you're scoot? not in Bristol? Let's you're you're on vacation. Right. You're in Tokyo or something. You're like, oh fuck, right. I love scootering. Oh wow, look scooters. So I'm just gonna go on one. You don't know. Right. You you don't I did know that the, in Stockholm. You don't know the lay of the land, right? It's, no, I didn't. No, it's more dangerous. Is is the point? Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. But I'm saying it if you if generally speaking. Oh, here's the other thing: the voice scooters lock at eleven thirty at night. They say no, and if it's <laughs> after eight o'clock, you have to take a sobriety test to ride it. Oh right, and well, you just gotta blow like a little... into a little tube. <laughs> no, it's like a it pops up with a little reaction based mini game, and you have to click on things. In a certain time where Alcohol it says, no, you're too detected. drunk. Shutting <laughs> down. <laughs> like, no, no right for you. <laughs> uh, and if it's raining, I think it says fuck off. So it, it's quite finicky. Right. But uh, I mean, the lime scooters will just fucking let you on anywhere. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah and get on. Uh, and the parking zones were very specific in Bristol, which is quite, quite a nuisance at times. But yeah, Becky, I'm sorry to hear you had a negative experience. Yeah, that experience sucks. With the yeah, but scooters. I mean, it sucks. But honestly, like, it's no no surprise either. Like, mm. I'm, I, it's a it's a wonder that it doesn't happen way more often, or maybe it's just you don't hear about it too much. But I I, I think they are pretty dangerous, honestly. Mm. I've got another story if you guys want to hear it. This is uh, yeah, keep going. This is from someone who wants to remain anonymous. Right. Okay. Mm. I am a student studying at the University of Birmingham. Right. But they grew up in Portsmouth. My name confirm. is Steve and my postal code is... <laughs> <laughs> they Don't can confirm it is though. a shithole. Right. <laughs> um, so, toilet-related story. I would like to say, we really have given the impression, haven't we, that the number one topic for this podcast is toilets. Because I'll be honest with you, about 25% of all the emails I get for the podcast mailbag, are about toilets. You can't beat a good toilet story, though, honestly. Look, well, we, look the reality is, is that, that we are not scared to talk about, you know, embarrassing shit that's happened to us, true, you know? True, true. And, it, 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 you know, we're, the, we're real pioneers, and we're confronting <laughs> this issue. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and, and making people feel comfortable with the embarrassing shit that's happened to them. Yeah. Well, like this anonymous they, guy. They should not be. Who's they about to not, tell us yeah, some embarrassing really shit. They really should not feel good about this. This is on a related, <laughs> on a lad's holiday to Magaluf. One of my friends was obsessed with shitting in one of the five litre water bottles as it had a big rim. Right? <laughs> oh, wow. So stop you right there. What the fuck are you what lads doing? What the fuck? I feel like these are the same guys that are all fucking standing around a hotel room with one girl in it. Like, uh... <laughs> yeah, same lads. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I'm getting back to the room. So uh, one girl, no problem. Hey, right. Benny, what are you doing? Uh, I'm doing my bottle shitting trick I'm over shitting here. In a bottle. Okay, with... well it's my turn to go. <laughs> Let's go. Well, I'm getting back to the room. We realized this is after they've been out. The empty bottles we had stashed for this experiment. The maids had thrown away. Oh, thank being, God. Yeah. Being the penultimate night of the holiday, my friend opted to use a Lipton iced tea bottle, which is much smaller. Ten minutes later, he comes out of the toilet with a big poo flopped over the bottle. Oh, he started like, chasing us around our tiny room until he slipped and dropped the poo <laughs> over the balcony, which landed on the balcony of the room below us. We got kicked out of the hotel 
and lost our deposit. <laughs> oh my god! Imagine <laughs> being in the fucking room below these guys. Disgusting! Oh my lord! Oh what my the fuck god. are they doing up there? And then all of a sudden, bleh, just a fucking <laughs> turd on your balcony. Oh, Revolting. Well, well, listen, that guy clearly was uh, had healthy gut bacteria. Holy shit! And yeah, a, a, a nice, solid, nice, solid snake. Yeah, and yeah, I mean that that shows good gut health, yeah. you know. And you know, obviously, he's eating enough fiber or not enough fiber or whatever it is you know the right amount of fiber <laughs> yeah you, you don't have... even know just enough to form eating... a nice tube in there yeah the, the sub amount of fiber that's on the eating right whatever amount, is the correct it. amount well so yeah. good uh had an email from someone called caleb uh who is a u.s army medic right uh and listens to the podcast whilst deployed right um and i uh, wanted to say thank you for all the uh the entertainment there's a picture of a whole bunch of them about to get on a fucking helicopter in afghanistan nice and he was one of the guys that assisted in the refugee uh, rescue effort in 2021 from Afghanistan. Holy He's shit, Kabul. man. Thank you. Whilst thank listening you for your to the service. Triforce fucking podcast of all things. That's what Jesus they say Christ. in America. Thank you for your service. So Thank you for your service. Big up to Caleb for his service uh, on this uh, that's special. That's the big up. For that's the, the big um, up. Caleb the, gets the big for the up for episode. his service. Yeah. Thanking well, you I'd for like your service. I'd like to give our next uh, emailer a big up as well. Hey, oh. Perian. Oh, I'm on. a window cleaner in Baltimore. Oh, shit. Okay. I dangle off buildings and clean some crazy buildings. Right. Just wanted to say thanks for getting me through my work days with Triforce. If you ever want a tour of the most dangerous city in America, you should stop yes. by Yikes. on your American road trip. Shout out to you, Eric. All right, thank you. Man, you should start a TV show called Dangling, where you just go <laughs> and wash like extreme windows in all these dangerous cities. You can go to like fucking Honduras and stuff and just clean some windows there. Dangling. Lost under fire. Season five oh of God. Dangling. Dangling and was, um, <laughs> so I was I was cleaning these windows in this hotel in Magaluf. <laughs> 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 I looked in and I saw 12 naked men chasing each other around with a poo flopping out of an iced tea bottle. Next thing I know, poo lands on my head from the balcony above. Oh, I got them kicked out man. and got rid of their deposit. Well, that's the job, isn't it? That's the job. Oh, thank you for your service. Me. Yeah, Window thank you man. for your service as well. Holy shit. This is, oh, uh, this is another good one. This is uh, about Woodstock. It's from someone who was there. What Woodstock '99 is what we're talking yeah. about here. Oh, this is from sweet! Somebody was there. Someone who's Fantastic. There. This is from. They signed off as G. G. Okay. As a 16-year-old who'd stood next to bonfires, the trucks when they exploded, the uh, ATMs when they were lifted and smashed on the ground, when you are treated, and I'm doing, the, I'm, I'm not picking a side here. I'm reading this in the manner in which I believe it was written. Right. When you are treated like a walking wallet with zero respect. The reaction a lot of people had during this event wasn't shocking. Some no, I, things, yeah, I agree completely. Right, some things they didn't fully include in the documentaries. By the night of the first, by the the first night, some of the restaurants had shit mounded above the seat, just piled up shit. They had two trucks servicing hundreds of bathrooms. The water fountains showed a chunk of them didn't work. If you were near one of the main stages, you were hundreds of feet from the free water fountains. So add a couple hundred more feet if you were front and center. The prices sound like nothing these days, but back then it was a real sticker shock. I bought a couple no, hundred bucks. It still does. Yeah. Like four yeah, dollar four dollar bottle, bottle of water. Yeah. It still no like way. a lot. Yeah. Like, I, yeah. I bought a couple hundred bucks and almost ran out Saturday morning just feeding me and my girlfriend. Had to start managing party favors, which I was foreign to, just to feed us till Sunday night. I don't know what that means. Managing party favors. Party favors. I have no idea. I don't. Does know. that mean he's selling drugs or? Managing party favors, which I was foreign to. I don't know what that means. Yeah, I don't know either. I didn't riot. I did watch. I never felt in danger during any of it. It was odd, but you knew it was us versus them. Yeah. People who stole soda, water, food off the trucks before they burned were handing it out to everyone they saw. Add sunstroke, dehydration, lack of food, and drugs into it all. It's amazing the riot ended as quickly and non-violently as it did. Yeah. The guys mm. who ran this didn't give a shit about what happened to anyone during this. Half of us could have died in our tents on the first day no, and we've gone well, unnoticed all weekend. Even I could in tell the that by Friday at the age of 16. Yeah, even in the documentary, wow. you can tell they didn't give a shit. All they were concerned Absolutely. with was covering themselves. You know, like they, they were they were doing fucking the, the most ridiculous mental gymnastics around every goddamn thing that happened yep. to, 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 to help them sleep better at oh, night. Oh, totally. It was, it, it's insane. Like, totally. I, I think anybody who knew anything about it could see that as well. That the I think it just goes to credit, like, the 
I mean, I wasn't crediting the organisers with with no no one dying. I think it, you know, I think they were they were trying to create this illusion that the the crowd was some sort of violent hooligans. When yeah, you know, obviously, and obviously there were horrible. And, but they were also trying to make it, it seem terrible. like it was um, you know, like you know, a couple of assholes doing it. Which sure, everywhere there's going to be a couple of assholes, right? Like that's it's not you know, it's not exclusive. Even to right here, Woodstock ninety nine, yeah. but it doesn't it 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 doesn't make sense that like you know that that's the that that's the line against all of the shit that they they pulled right like, right yeah i wonder how how much should it, would it take for you to like get get riled up Sit if the queue in. is longer than 10 minutes um, it's a riot yeah like uh <laughs> especially, the edge especially right now. nowadays yeah but i i mean i've been to i've been to festivals before like i've been to reading i've been to v festival like I've been to big outdoor uh, concerts and stuff. And what year did you go to V Festival? I went to the V Festival in. It must have been like two thousand and five, two thousand. You know what? Maybe? We might have been there that same year. It was the. It was the year that uh, the Pixies were playing. Uh, they did a reunion tour and they they oh. played the V Festival and the so Strokes. I didn't, I didn't see them. That the year. Strokes headlined as well. Okay, we, then we stuck no, around this for that was, too. This was a different year. Yeah, that, and then I think went. the year before that we went to Reading, where so that looks like two thousand and four. Reading, two thousand. The Strokes, Pixies. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then um, I think maybe I think I went to Reading, and maybe it was two thousand and three, where like Blur had had come back and they were headlining. But also right. uh, one night you had Metallica, Linkin Park, Blink One Eighty Two. Uh, and a couple of other bands. I, I mean, it was like it was a fairly busy weekend. Like I didn't even see every show. But right. to be fair, I didn't want to see every show. I just went to see like I wanted so, to see like Blur and the Strokes. I and... reckon I was there 2003. You were there 2004. So we just missed each other. Not yeah, that we yeah. Bumped into no, each no. Other but it, but not. even then, like it, it's a. Big... I would have loved it if you'd gone through your pictures and found like yeah. one of you in the background, like yeah. flipping oh, that'd be hilarious. someone off yeah, or yeah. shitting but, in a bottle. You know, it's a big it's a big busy festival. But I never felt unsafe at any point honestly no. like uh you know it it seemed to be pretty well run but yeah, I, I don't no, know if I, I would have are. felt the same at, at Woodstock 99, which felt no, like agreed. it was not very well run at agreed, all, you agreed. know, like compared yeah. to some of it the other like things. It felt like the last minute shit. I also think, you know, if you think about it, if you've been putting on a festival for years, mm -hmm. you've got all this expertise in the company about how to put it on, what came up sure, last time. Yeah. Because most of the time, if you're putting on something that big, yeah. the problems, if it's the first time you've done it, I mean, it they evolves, haven't done Woodstock yeah. in 30 years, it's going to be completely different. Of they, course. Well, they, it was completely cack handed. And they yeah. basically thought, oh, it'll be fine but not but only that they are. skimped on a lot of stuff too right? a lot of stuff yeah yeah like even like the sec the security they, they didn't have proper security detail they just hired a bunch of kids and said we'll give you yeah. 500 bucks to be security for the weekend right you know exactly. like well, I, Ridiculous. It's, it's crazy like i you know it's but uh, you know these festivals are run by big companies that just do that yeah. that is their job running this festival and they know it inside out and all the people that yeah. work there have been doing it for years so yeah. they understand all the problems and how to get him get ahead of them and cut them off at the source and everything really and they know exactly how much of everything you're going to need yeah it's all expertise that's been built up not just a bunch of fucking guys who say we want to make some money let's do woodstock it's like you don't know what the fuck you're doing and it shows yeah. well they had the they had the woodstock in 94 as well didn't they they tried to do one in 94 and that was the one i don't you probably remember seeing the footage of green day back before green day were were super duper popular like they are now or whatever um but green day playing on a stage and like tons of clumps of mud being thrown at them and the, the lead singer puts like a big clump in his mouth. Like it's no. it's a fairly <laughs> famous uh, clip, but the whole thing was uh, again just a mess. Like they didn't ha they didn't have proper anything. Yeah. the The weather was terrible, so there was just mud everywhere, and people. It was just like mudslides all over the place. People were throwing clumps of mud at, at the stage. Uh. They couldn't um, they couldn't properly fence in the whole event. So in the end, right. they just had like. A thousand percent more people than capacity because people were just breaking the fences down and walking in and stuff like uh, it was a disaster it was it was amazing that they even tried to do another one after that it went so badly but then sure enough five years later they tried there you go. yeah all right here's another email uh this is from winston uh, I recently started working as an apprentice electrician in Ottawa. Hey. And one of the contracts the company does is with the OCH, which is Ottawa Community Housing. Uh -huh. These buildings, I was told and later saw, are notorious for poopy hallways, 
pissy balconies and needly <laughs> equipment. Jesus <laughs> Christ. Can That's we my fucking... childhood home you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we'd fucking left Woodstock 99. <laughs> One morning we were sent out for a, re- for a scheduled shutdown where we turn off all the power to the building and service repair the electrical equipment. Yeah. This tends to cause issues with the cracked up residence on its own, but is not the focus of today. When we arrived, there were a full half dozen cop cars in front of the building, and upon further inquiry from the more friendly residents, we found out the Kool-Aid man had thrown a tantrum and and started throwing his shit, as in, like, items, because his cat had eaten his pulled pork. Upon further inquiry, we found out the Kool-Aid man was so named because the night before he'd got so drunk, he'd run through the wall into his neighbor's apartment. Nice. Just smash through the wall. Sure. Uh, My co-workers tell me this is pretty standard for these buildings. And I've had many more tales to tell from the depths of the Ottawa Community Housing Project. Were they were they in Vanier? Actually, you know what? Vanier used to be kind of rough. I don't know if it still is, but it was like known as like kind of a, a rougher part of town. Mm. But may, you know, with gentrification and stuff, maybe it's like maybe. up and coming and become like a you know some bohemian paradise or whatever. But um, back 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 in the day, it was pretty rough. I I wager that this experience took place in Vanier, but I could be wrong. Mm. Hmm. Well, we'll find out. More details to follow. <laughs> Good. I can't wait. Uh, here's an email. This is a this is pretty much specifically to me. I apologize. Hope all of you are well. Ti this year is in Singapore, and I'm Singaporean, but I'm extremely pissed at the fact that Ti allowed people to buy five tickets, and then he repeats it. Five tickets in caps with an exclamation mark. It's like they put out still water so that mosquitoes could come breed and cause havoc. The regular price tickets wow. were 88 SGD. I guess it's Singaporean dollars for the playoffs. Singapore dollars, yeah, yeah, yeah. But scalpers bought and it all sold out within seconds. And now it's going for 10 times the price. Damn. The finals tickets are now going for 1.8 thousand Singaporean dollars. I hate it. Will you be coming? I really want to come to TI and tell you I had an extravagantly small penis. <laughs> now that may not happen. You're oh, a powerful no. person in TI. Do something. Sadly, I cannot. Yeah, and I am not. He can't. He can't. He can't put in measures to combat the scalpers. I cannot. It's, it's sadly beyond me. It's uh, way above his pay grade. Well, th- this is a problem, right? Because th- uh, there's a whole web. When you look, when you see Reddit or whatever, they always say, "What's the worst company in the world?" And almost always, someone says Ticketmaster. Right? Right. There's this whole. Yeah. There's this whole mess where. Like the stadiums have a deal with Ticketmaster, so they have to sell them through there. Yeah, and then obviously Ticketmaster just don't care; they just want to sell them. Yeah, and so they 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 do provide some sort of windows and stuff for people to buy them. But of course, all the scalpers are the kings of how this works. You know, they, and they know can their just, way around it. They yeah. can just buy these and resell them for twice the price, three times the price, so easily. You know, it's it's and and you know, once a couple of people are doing it, everyone's like, oh, I can get on on the action and double my money here. And before you know it, everyone's you know scamming left, right. And Center, yeah. obviously unless you have like proper registration where people register with their account right. or their passport or something in the first place you're going to end up with this stuff but obviously that that is dangerous for Ticketmaster because they they just don't care they just want to sell they the just tickets. want to get them out the door as fast as possible yeah yeah and then move on with the next project like they they and and as a result they it's a really shitty situation for people who actually want to attend these events also um, I, I think the scalpers this is the biggest problem with with the whole scalping thing is People buy the, the scalpers' tickets. Yeah, I've well, they're desperate. They want to I've get into done the it. event. I've, uh, there are gigs I'm like, I've got to see this band. I am going to pay. And it sucks. And I know I'm perpetuating this whole system. I'm sorry, but everybody does it because I go to these gigs that are sold out. Everybody's buying tickets from the scalpers or they bought them online from scalpers. Because we keep doing it, they keep being able to do it. Unless we all collectively stop doing it, which is never going to happen. No. Is you're going to think, I've got to see them. This is their final but even, tour. Or but what you're saying there is, is such a risk, right? Because there's so many scams. Like right. 90% of the, the, the people offering tickets either don't have them or are just trying to get your money off yeah, you. Yeah. You know, it, it is so shady. Like, even doing it right outside the gig, I'm always like, fucking, this is a bit dodgy, even though it's like usually going to be okay. Yeah, it's just, it's it's too much of a risk, right? I'm just scared of doing it. Yeah. Um, and it's shitty, you yeah. know? It doesn't need to be that way. Um, you know, it, it also just kind of creates like this different community of people who are actually there. Like the ones you've had to go through scalping and stuff. Maybe... I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It's what a to tough do. one. Um, it's a tough. It's just I don't know if it's so. Yeah. Sorry to hear that, dude. Sorry. I was trying to get a ticket off you, P Flax, but you were like, I don't know if I can get you one because you don't even know if you're going. Right. I mean, I, know? I don't know, and then I don't know if I get plus ones. I, as soon as I know, I will of course try to to see if I can get any plus ones and all the rest of it. But um, if I if I end up going to Singapore and you see me walking about, 
Uh, come up and say hi if you're a Triforce fan. And, well, uh, you might not be able to at those prices. And then factor in <laughs> well, the no, price no. of gas in this well, economy. I'm just saying, no, no, no. P- P-Flex is saying he's got a plus one so he can get you in. How much How much do you want for the... Well, because, well I, you know, I, I mean, I would charge a hefty markup for my plus one ticket. 300 Singapore dollars? 10 grand. 10, 10 grand. 10 grand. Ten, 10K for one ticket. Yeah. Holy crap. 10 grand. Yeah. All 20 access. grand. 20 grand. You didn't what was it like 80, it's gone up a lot. What was it 80, 80, 80, 80, 80 Singaporean, Singaporean dollars? So yeah, I don't know what that translates into in. Uh, it's 50 pounds. Yeah, so I'm charging. Quid. I'll charge you 8,000 pounds for one ticket. Holy crap. So, it's so actually, 10,000 Singapore yeah, dollars. I'm going to say actually 20,000 Singaporean dollars. I want to have a good time in Singapore. I want you to turn up with the money in cash. In a, in a suitcase, and we'll do the transfer in a public place, like a bus terminal. Yeah. Actually, I do have some some gold bars in in Singapore. Perfect. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> do you actually? Like, not every actually... day you meet somebody yeah, 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 who yeah, can yeah. Uh, claim that. Wait, you have some gold bars stashed somewhere in, in Singapore? S- in Singapore, yeah. When I set it up like 10 years ago, because I, I looked around at places that I could buy, like, bullion. And there's a bullion place <laughs> in Singapore called Bullion Star. Uh, of course there and is. I bought, you don't own I went anything to, in when Singapore. When I went to the bank, they thought I was fucking James Bond or something, transferring money to Singapore. I'd love to, to see the, the office of this place. It's just like, a, it's like the back of, like, the, the Thai nail place in you Better can Call You can go in. Just a fucking no, phone on the floor, that's it. It's like a big showroom in there where they've got a whole thing, because it's like one of these places where people, you know, yeah. invest and put money and they've got like a vault and stuff in in the shop it's interesting are you thinking that we'll go um, to singapore and, and we'll do the the greatest bullion heist in history well no i no, went he to just the wants store to go admire been to, his, his I, I, bullion oh, I, I, can been i see my gold bullion please <laughs> <laughs> so yeah that's the thing actually um yeah, I, I went there wow. when I was in Singapore. Well, but yeah, I still, still got it as far as I know. It wasn't very much, actually. Okay. It wasn't even a proper gold bar. It was like a share of a gold bar. Oh, was it like, I mean? a, like the size of like a Kit Kat uh, segment? <laughs> well, because a gold bar is like, what, four, 40, 50 grand? So wow. what you could do is you could you could buy like a, a, a corner, portion of a, a corner. You could buy bar. like, yeah, like a corner of a gold bar. Nice. Um, which is not the best way to do it. You should have sort of a more allocated storage but I, where I do you store all your thought, bitcoins i thought it would be funny <laughs> don't have any of those oh. but there so i haven't got any crypto any at all i never bought a single one right but um, Good on you. you know it's only a matter of time but if i did if i did store it it would be on a external hard drive that i would lose of course um, like that guy that lost landfill. it in the tip and spends yeah. his weekends scurrying around he's still going he's then, still then going it's safe right no one's no one's gonna find his bitcoin he's yeah. he's got that forever it's gone you know, he's still scouring, though. He's still at it. He's still looking. So here's one from Millie. Uh, after my first entry Vanilla? for the mailbag... No, sadly not. Oh. After my first entry for the mail- mailbag was deemed too generic, I decided to write to you once again. I'm sorry if I called it generic, but... Uh, Millie, sorry. It probably There's was There's something Millie. you anyway. need to know about us, Millie. We're only impressed by toilet stories, so... Yeah. This is... Although this is weird. And I've not heard this before, and it makes me think that, that Millie might be wrong. Anyone, people will need to confirm. When I was 18, I moved out and started my first real job. After a couple of weeks being there, I was walking through the warehouse, saw a woodlouse on the floor, and I exclaimed to my new colleagues, look at the size of that cheesy log, to which I received startled looks of confusion, and the question, what the fuck is a cheesy log? It was this day that I found out that these creatures were actually called woodlice. I did some research. It turns out that cheesy log is a term for woodlice that originates and is only used in Reading. Oh. Fuck what, Reading. What, fuck it's Reading. such a dump. What are you doing? Cheesy log? This, what, what is that? What is that? Oh my God, you're right. A cheese log. Never. Look at these names for woodlice. In, on the Isle of Man, they call them a granny grunter. What? Oh. I know. In in they're called like a Billy Baker in Somerset. <laughs> Billy Baker. A boat a, a boat builder in Newfoundland. What the hell? Newfound- Newfoundland. What is going on? They're called Ch- Charlie Pigs in Norfolk. They're called Cheesy Bobs in Guildford. Cheese. What? They they different... There's nothing to do with. There's nothing cheesy about them. They don't look cheesy at all. They're called they're called Chuggy Pigs and Crawley <laughs> Bakers and Daddy Grampfers and. Peasy bugs and penny sows and piggy wigs. They just look like really shit. small versions of the fucking bugs in uh, Act Two of Diablo Two. You know, like in the in right. the tunnels and shit. Never, like I've always called them woodlice. 
I, I, I don't know. I don't think there's any. Is there a Dorset nickname for Woodlight? Hobby Horse, yeah. Never. From heard. the Isle of Purbeck. Oh, okay, yeah. Well, that's. Is down. it Woodlice or is it And also Woodlouse? Billy Button, they're called in Dorset. Is there. I always thought. I didn't think it was. Uh, maybe I'm wrong, though. I think I mean, the, the, the plural is Woodlice. The singular is Woodlouse. Woodlouse. Do you reckon people have just edited this Wikipedia page with weird shit? Yeah, I think, I think probably, it's probably a yeah. load of rubbish. It's just a joke now. It's mental. This is a, well, this is this is a crazy. I one. love this. This is a crazy. This is one. one yeah. I like that. I th I like that, Millie. Thank you. Thanks, yeah, Millie. Really I good. love. I love to. I like to hear those moments where everyone is like, "What are you, you saying?" You spotted a cheesy bob, yeah. and They're nobody like, knew what you were talking about. Yeah, what are you cheesy? Look, oh, don't be daft. It's a Billy Bunter or whatever the fuck yeah, it yeah. was called. <laughs> it's a shipbuilder. What do you mean? <laughs> so strange. All right, this is from. Uh, I, I guess I'll keep the name anonymous. They haven't asked for that, but I, I will. I will do that. Uh, yeah, Granny this, Grunter. This, this person. So hey, uh, thought I'd try my hand at offering my perspective on your chat about that sperm doctor. I think that was the one where we discovered that the sperm doctor had been uh, impregnating people with his own sperm. That's right. That's the fertility right. Yeah, that's a while back. Yeah. Holy crap. Yeah. That was, yeah. As the child of two women who eventually met my biological father, I have to say that responding aggressively even when disappointed in him is bizarre to me and I think my collection of half-siblings would all agree though I know them to varying degrees. In the end, her biological father turned out to be kind of a creep. Not just because he's a, he's a hunter, and right. uh, I believe that this this person is a vegetarian. So shout out to you. Apparently, that's yeah. not our shout out. That's their shout out to you. Right. Likes to slip obscure patriarchal and white nationalist great replacement articles into my inbox. So right. this guy became a sperm donor to put white sperm out there into the world. Right, uh, and that that's quite an interesting motivation for becoming a sperm donor. Yeah, is to make in sure way, that white sperm is getting out. In a way, quite quite there. ironic though that 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 the lesbian parents, <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah, quite beautiful. I think, yeah, quite good, quite good that they were able to. You never know what you're gonna get. It. I guess it's like life is a box of chocolates. Life is a is a sperm bank. You never know. You never know what you're gonna what you're gonna get. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, but the, the point is uh, not an original one, uh, they go on to say, but in the end, it is true that your DNA should only matter to your doctor. Any investment in it, other than as practical data, is nothing more than crystal slinging mysticism. I would be fine as the child of Mr. Rogue Fertility Doctor. To anyone who wouldn't be, I would suggest seriously considering the dangers of placing so much emphasis on your heritage and the dark mm -hmm. past that can lead society down. I think that's interesting because, yeah, you, you shouldn't worry too much about where you came from. It doesn't determine who you are. No, of course. You wouldn't say, well, I have to be X because my family was. So, yeah, interesting. Yeah. I can see both sides, but I think the the Southern American attitude is very filled with honor and this kind of... I, I don't know. I just, I just feel like possibly different cultures might respond to it differently. And... And Southern Americans do have an ever so slightly different culture to others around the world in that they, in the way they respond to things. Did I tell you about this? Yeah. I, I read about yeah, this. I think, it was yeah, I think you told us about it. Yeah, I did. It's really interesting. This is a, this is a cracker of an email. Uh, this is from someone I'm going to call Jay. Okay. They have attached a picture of a massive fire in Washington. Okay. Right. I am a wildland firefighter in Washington. Right. We get sent out on two to three week dispatches where we work 16 hour shifts a day on fires in the Pacific Northwest and beyond. Not only this is Washington state, so Northwest. Yeah. Not only are fires a part of life here, they are a massive industry. An individual fire camp may well have over a thousand people at it. Imagine a music festival with no music. There are contractors galore, hand wash trailers, showers, truck drivers, caterers, pilots, copy shop suppliers, anything you could imagine. We pay schools, parks, and private owners to use their property for camps. The costs for fighting a single fire often run into the hundreds of millions, even billions. If you are convicted of causing a fire, you are on the hook for the entire cost. Think of all the contractors and fire personnel who rely on these yearly disasters to make their money. The worse the fires get, the bigger the industry grows. Not to mention the local towns who are hungry for the income a thousand person fire camp brings in. Jesus. Not sure what the takeaway here is, but most people don't realize how much of an economic industry wildlife response is. If the fires went away, you'd have a lot of people out of a job. The irony. 
Uh, and Triforce helps uh, <laughs> helps Jay get through the sixty hour days. God bless. Good luck to you. Yeah, uh, thanks for your service as well. Fighting. That's a that's an eye opener. I never even yeah. thought about it. That never way. and never thought that there would be an industry built around no. that kind of disaster. But if, the, if you just think about it for a second, of course there is. Of yeah, of course there is. Fuck. Yeah, I see. I see what he's saying in that you know you don't want people to start fires deliberately to fund that industry it's like oh you know yeah. crikey we haven't right. had a fire this year where everyone's going to be out of a job but at the same time i think fires aren't going to go anywhere with the with the climate change and the, the weird right. weather and stuff like this it's yeah, always it's a natural be occurring thing uh, in a lot of cases too right like big um, wildfires like it's uh well one of the worst things i've read about this as well is that what you find is that a lot of these climate change um people are very much like oh you know i've got a forest i can sell you cl- climate credits so i won't cut down this forest and of course then it gets burned down in a wildfire anyway and then you know these these big corporations manage to whitewash their carbon footprint um it's all very it's very frustrating you know the idea that oh i like a, an owner of a forest a private owner i guess of land in america can you know sell these carbon credits and then yeah be off the hook you know on the idea that they would have cut them down otherwise yeah which mm. is pretty problematic but it's a problem for an, another day yeah. Yeah. Uh, happy, a happy one to end. Wait, on. wait, wait, yeah, no, no, gosh, I've, yeah. I've got a really but, good one though. I've oh, got okay. one really good one I want to do. This is really interesting. Okay. Better than and this then one. And then we can finish. This is yes. This is really interesting. This is from Tim. Okay, just okay. Thought, Tim. 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 And this is going Tim nice but dim. Right, going Remember back him? as far as yes. episode seventy-three of the Triforce podcast. What happened okay? in that one? We have no idea, but we obviously talked about jury duty because that's what this email is about. Oh, sure. I was the foreman for a crown court case, the jury foreman, for a crown court case regarding a man who had allegedly forced himself on his nephew, who was a child. And a few things stand out for me that I'm sure you'll find interesting, if not a little horrifying. Not about the details of the case, don't Okay, worry. good, good. Firstly, the jury is not allowed to know the legal definition of the crime that the person is accused of. Right. Which seems completely fucking bonkers. What this means is I still have zero idea whether he was actually guilty of that crime specifically, or instead of a different crime. Secondly, the judge told what? us that, well, so it, you're only allowed to, to re- talk about the crime that they've been accused of, whether they're guilty of it. You, the jury is not allowed to do any kind of speculation you know, well, or anything. Maybe it yeah. was a different thing. Or it yeah, sounds yeah. You just have to evaluate it on that speci- those specifics. And yes. I think the jury is given as little information as possible so that it's up to the prosecution, and the defense to, to sway them. Which is essentially what a jury trial is all about, is winning what, the jury. What? Yes. We have Google, and also we, we have years of education. You're not allowed like, to some tap people into will any of those resources. Know. Well, you right, know the right, details right. of every you're crime. You're in a hotel, you're eating the buffet every morning, and yeah. you're some deliberating. Guy, that's why you've got a jury, though. One of the guys might well know right. what he well, says he knows. Well, so hang on. Secondly, the judge told us we were not allowed, we were allowed to infer evidence, which I'm 99.999% sure isn't allowed. On top of that, the judge told us that if we declared guilt for one count, we had to declare guilt on all the rest too. Where they also was this happening? Yeah. They also mentioned an unrelated crime in Australia and then told us not to let that affect our decision making. Thirdly, we had an ex-police <laughs> officer in our jury, so they definitely weren't impartial. For legal reasons, I can't talk about specifics in deliberation, but I can say that they definitely were encouraging people to vote a specific way. Fourth, where is this? Where is this? Happening? This is the UK. Is this... I think it might have been Australia okay. actually. Fourthly, the best legal advice I can ever give you is shut your flaving mouth. If this man had been quiet throughout the trial, he'd be a free man. Which leads me to my final point: if your public defender is hot garbage, you are done. Uh, at no point in this trial did the defendant's representation ever ask the witnesses if they had any hard evidence to prove that this man did it. A jury will decide your fate within five seconds of seeing you and spend the rest of the trial fighting that initial opinion. It keeps me up sometimes because mm. as soon as the words guilty left my mouth, I realized I played a crucial part in putting an innocent man in prison. There was no evidence to suggest he'd done it. No eyewitnesses, no smoking gun, just an alleged victim with an obvious grudge over a failed business proposition. For your own sake, actively discourage anyone from ever doing jury duty. Jesus. It's a shambles, it's unjust, and it makes the trial a matter of showmanship. Good heavens, Tim. Yeah. I think there's Holy so crap. much to unpack there. I wanted to put that in there because I think a lot of people email in about whatever the last thing we spoke about was. If you have had jury duty experience, if you are a lawyer or a barrister or a judge or something, email in. We would love to hear some more details about this personally. I'm fascinated. That's by crazy. It. Yeah, I am, I'm also fascinated by it. But it's also something I never want to do in my whole life. I haven't had to do it yet. 
So there's a good chance I make it through without having to do it. I can t- I can completely understand his sentiment of the brain fog of being in a new place with weird people telling you what to do, being very authoritative, you being scared, there being criminals and policemen around, you know, and all this weird formality and all the wigs and your honours and all strange wooden panelled rooms and strange smells and being sh- shut away and being commanded to do all these things. It must be very disorientating and then having to make like rational decisions mm. you know the accused is doing that like uh neck slicing motion from the from the dock <laughs> as well like you know if you talk you're dead and stuff like fuck. yeah like, I, like all of this stuff like you can see it could be very hard yeah. to make a make a sense like a rational sense position and after you've done it regret it immediately and think what was i forced to do you know what what was i to party to and and don't feel bad like i guess this is just uh, dated it's the way it works it's over it's i think it's uh oh, it's, it's a bit of both worlds isn't it it's, it's at the we've been spoiled by these murder shows where everyone confesses or they have csi and they have genetic you know evidence right. linking all the people to the crime and you know in reality you know we don't get that and we've been having to make these decisions and i think the courts have been frustrated by this and certainly the police services where they almost know someone did it but they have no evidence and they have to you know rely on getting them in the jury and convincing you know i the think i think a, they did if it you, if you um there's a the, there's a guy called the secret barrister he's on twitter he has a book and everything i have definitely spoken about him before his book is really interesting there's currently a strike on in this country um amongst the sort of public defenders i guess you'd call them in in the states but over here it's like you know the sort of uh the council that you're given uh, the, the 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 cuts that have been made to the legal system in this country are unbelievable the people in charge of solving it at the top obviously politicians and, and all those lot are completely clueless about how the system works i don't even know what a surprise if they, if, yeah if they have any idea how it functions because <laughs> the, the conclusions and suggestions they've come up with are all appallingly misguided and they, they obviously don't understand the, the system at all no um how little these people are paid to do the job how much work is expected of them it's basically like the nhs but for the law so they're overworked, he, he, understaffed, all underpaid. All of that stuff awful. may well be the way it works in the UK. I think we we I have more understanding of the American legal system the it feels like than the one we've got right. here. Yeah, for sure. There's all kinds of weird details about it. Anyway, we would love more emails about that. That was, that was really interesting. That is fascinating. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. Um, it's great to great to do a mailbag. These are better episodes yeah, now. Can I just say as well this uh, <laughs> this episode is particularly uh, blessed because uh, Terry flipped over. It's kind of oh. like you know when they watch that dog to see if. It farts five times before the world cup to see if england's gonna win or not or whatever yeah. well terry flipped onto his back so that means that this has been the best episode we've ever done boom well, there so you there go. you go fantastic news yeah. all right take it easy everyone. Right. Bye. peace bye bye bye, bye.